Hello, and a very warm welcome along to Sportsbet TV. Uh, Paul Alster here with you, of course, once again with my racing selections. And uh, we're looking forward to a very busy period of racing over Easter. And to all of you uh, celebrating Easter, a very happy Easter. To all of you still celebrating Passover, a very happy Passover. And to those about to start celebrating Ramadan, a happy Ramadan to you too. And to anybody celebrating anything else on top of celebrating backing big winners, that is, of course. And uh, we've got four recommendations for you this uh, Saturday. Uh, I didn't do any tips for the Friday, very nearly put up uh, Mum's tipple uh, for the All Weather Classics Day, but um, decided not to, because I'm not certain about the uh, one mile trip there on Friday. So focusing on this bulletin uh, on Easter Saturday, and then there'll be another bulletin out on Sunday, mid-afternoon for Easter Monday, which of course is Irish National Day amongst other things. So a very, very busy, busy period. Uh, I've already got a, a suggestion for the Irish National, but I'll save that for Sunday's uh, bulletin. I'm pretty bullish about it. And if you're new to this service, this is not a service that uh, offers you short price favorites in the obvious uh, first or second uh, market leader in the paper forecast. I'm about tipping horses at decent each way prices. And if you're new to uh, my tipping, well, the thing about me is that I just don't tip short priced horses. Uh, for the most part, I'm trying to avoid backing favorites and second favorites, especially if they're short price second favorites, because it's a, it's a quick way to the poor house. And while we may not always tip winners or the horses may not always get placed because we're tipping horses at a decent odds, Overall, we have a wonderful record, and you can uh, get an idea of that record, really, by what's been going on over the last few weeks. And you can read in my profile as well, if you don't know who I am and what I've been doing over the years, just below this screen, if you uh, read the description, you'll find out all about me and what I've been doing in my racing career. Well, let's just take you to last week, which was another terrific week. Uh, there was the one non-runner, which was the second of our selections in the Lincoln, the other four all ran, and they all ran superbly well. Three seconds and one standout winner. Valadom, an excellent second, leading all the way as we intended uh, and expected at Newbury before being caught in the closing stages, a very good nine to one second. Sassified over in Ireland in the three-year-old handicap for Johnny Murta, recommended a double figure odds. Well, he looked all over the winner, really, uh, at the furlong pole. Um, eventually was caught by a horse called Tashkan or something like that um, from the Emma Mullins yard, who was the subject of a major gamble from 25 to one down to nine to two. So we really caught a Tata there. Uh, Sassify running a brilliant race, as I suggested he would on the longer trip, and he's one to keep an eye on. And then of course, we went so close in the Lincoln handicap, the first big flat handicap on turf in Britain with brunch, 16 to one each way, Michael Dodds, and this horse under Callum Rodriguez ran, as we suggested he would, really well first time out, came through, hit the front inside the final furlong. It looked for a moment as if we were going to be quids in with the Lincoln winner, but the horse I cited as the main danger, John Gosden's Hakiki, who's surely a group horse uh, in the making, came storming through down the centre of the track and uh, won in the end with a bit in hand. So Hakiki beat uh, brunch before 16 to 1 each way very very nice and that was the third one in and that followed earlier in the day that wonderful moment once again another big winner for my tipping service here with Agripart uh, for Jane Williams and Chester Williams what a wonderful race he ran at Kelso 18 to 1 he drifted like a barge couldn't believe the price and I know he was much bigger on the exchanges as well and he fought like a lion in the closing stages to beat the favourite Doyen Breed by a head. Terrific effort from a horse I really was sweet on. He was at the right side of the handicap finally, and he had conditions to suit. So that was a wonderful uh, four horse each way Yankee up and an 18 to one winner amongst. And I know loads of you were on and I'm delighted by the terrific comments so many of you uh, posted. And I appreciate them, believe me, from all over the world really do appreciate them. What it meant is that at the end of March, our profit to the level £10 each way stakes and the very occasional £10 win, which have been very few of, 
uh, it was £1,317 to the level £10 each way best recommended. And it means that over the six months from October through to the end of March, remarkably, and I don't think there are very many other tipsters can claim this, we had a £2,369.75 pence profit. And uh, that's something to be very proud of. And I am proud, and I'm proud of you as well for following me and uh, supporting those winners. Now on to the four for Easter Saturday. Uh, I'm starting off at Haydock in the 130 race, which is a two and a half mile handicap chase. Forecast good to soft ground, may dry out a bit. And most of the horses I've tipped this weekend are wanting decent ground. So if for some reason we suddenly get a deluge, that could rather clear the pitch for us. But the Haydock 130, there is a standout horse that the bookmakers are very much latched onto. And he's going to be a hot favourite called Five Star Getaway, trained by Christian Williams. He's on a hat trick um, and has been winning in very, very good fashion in handicaps at Wincanton and Sandown. Now, he has gone up £26, but he started on a very low mark. And it could still be that even having gone up so much, he may still be a step ahead of the handicapper. But at 11 to 10, 5 to 4, uh, that's not a backable price. The horse that does interest me, though, is Barton Knoll, trained by John Mackey and the mount of Jonathan Burke. Now, this is a horse who is a decent two and a half mile chaser who has to have decent ground, good ground, good to soft. That's probably ideal for him. All four of his career wins have been left handed and he won on his only previous start at Haydock, which was in May 2019. He won then by 11 lengths of 125. Now this horse is much better than the bare form figure of his fifth of 14 last time out at Newbury suggests because that was in the grade three Great Wood Gold Cup. Uh, that was on the 6th of March. And he led all the way to the last, jumped beautifully by the way. It was his first run for 99 days. And even though he was headed, he kept on really well. And I think he's going to run a really big race. And I'm very, very hopeful that Bart Knoll is going to give us a great start to the afternoon. He stays, he's got conditions. At the time of this recording, which is early on Friday lunchtime, very few firms are up. The only one up early, as is always the case now, is William Hill, who go up at 10 o'clock in the morning the day before. And good on them as well for putting their head above the parapet they went early eight to one about Barton Knoll. The last I saw, he's six to one. I think some firms may go a bit bigger, but let's just suggest six to one each way. And remember, as ever, to bet with a bookie who's going to give you the SP if it's bigger than the price you take, because it will make such a difference to your profit and loss over a season. So Barton Knoll in the 130 at Haydock on Saturday. Now, to Musselburgh, the 150, we're on the flat now, a seven furlong handicap, 15,000 quid, so worth winning. Good to self, good in places, the forecast. And Musselburgh is right on the sea, literally it is on the edge of the sea. And they get a really strong breeze, which tends to dry the ground out very quickly, which should suit my recommendation. Now, there are a few horses that are likely to come in for money. Uh, Stone Soldier, who's three from four on the all weather this winter, and he could be nicely handicapped coming back to turf. Marshall Dunn, of course, a distance winner of four pounds lower in October of last year. And Moll's Memory, who's made the journey up from Lambourne for Ed Walker and Holly Doyle on board is eye-catching. Horse who's won twice on heavy ground at Newbury, uh, over seven furlongs in 2020. I'm not sure he'd want the ground too much quicker than it already is. But the horse I'm interested in uh, is a horse called Hyad. And I'm going to come on to the trainer and jockey in a moment. But first, this horse was trained until very recently by Rebecca Basterman. And tragically, Rebecca died just a week or two back at the age of just 40. She'd suffered a long illness and she passed away at the age of just 40. And it's a huge loss to the racing world. She trained at Calthorpe near Weatherby, which is where I used to live. And... Um, the family have been involved in racing in our area uh, for a very long time, and I just can't imagine what they must have been going through uh, over recent weeks. Rebecca did very well since taking over the license from her father, Robin, who, of course, trained Border Lescott to win two Nunthorpes. 
Um, and we, all we can do is offer our very sincere, sincere condolences um, and wish the rest of the family all the very best and good health for the future. Now, uh, Rebecca's brother Harvey has taken over the license and this will be his first day with runners in his name. So uh, the suggestion is a horse called Hayard, trained by Harvey Baston. And I think this will be his first ever runner. And I believe it was Rebecca's favorite horse. And Sam James is going to ride. Now, I'm not just tipping this horse because of the sentiment, although obviously there is a, a lot of sentiment involved and I don't think there'll be a dry eye in the house if Hayard wins, but he does have a very good chance. And I think Rebecca was preparing him for this uh, race at Musselburgh. Uh, he's got a rock solid chance and um, a horse who's won seven of his 35 races. The first two victories were when he was trained by John Gosden. Uh, he joined Rebecca Basterman and has won five times since, including the 2019 First Hunt Cup. And he won over course and distance in October of 2018 off 88. He also won over a mile at this track uh, last season off 87, where he bolted up by three lengths. He loves Musselburgh, does Hyad, and is a horse who tends to come fast and late. So don't tear up your tickets if you can't see him uh, a furlong and a half out. Now, also very importantly, this horse has a great record fresh and he's been on his winter holidays. He's coming back for his first run of the season. And his record following a break in his career is first, 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 third, and first. So this 173 day break, I don't think is gonna be any issue at all. All his one wins have come on more or less good ground or even faster. So he does need the ground to stay dry. If it rains and goes soft, then his chance will be compromised. Now, at the time of recording, he's available at 10 to 1 each way, best price with bet 365. And I think that's a, a solid price for Hayard. I'd love to see him win for the reasons that I outlined earlier. And also because it would be great for Harvey, of course, to make a winning start as a trainer. So let's hope we're all cheering this one home. Hayard in the 150 each way at Musselburgh. Then I'm going to switch to Ireland, to Fairy House, the 255 race, very big weekend at Fairy House. They've got three days racing, culminating with the Irish National on Monday. But at 255, we have the three mile ladies national for all lady riders, a handicap chase. Uh, the top weight is Cuneo for Denise Foster. This horse, a good third to Mythbuster at Thurless last time out. Cavanagh's corner represents uh, the all conquering Henry de Bromhead. Emma Toomey, a very good rider on board, and this horse won here over two miles, five furlongs in November. Nine pounds higher, but uh, a horse who ran well last time out and has every chance. And of course, there's young Deb in this race. Now, how many of you saw that incredible race when young Deb uh, won at Navan uh, just last month under Hugh Morgan after the stirrups broke? Uh, after just the first fence, and Hugh rode him without stirrups in heavy ground for three miles. I'm sure he wasn't able to walk straight for a week afterwards, but he won in the most astonishing fashion. And I think he did touch a thousand uh, on Betfair because nobody thought he could possibly win uh, after the first couple of fences, and he did. So uh, young Deb is going to be in it as well. And so too Dubai Devils, who's a course and distance winner in the past and was sixth in the Ulster National last time out. But there's a horse here who I think has been laid out for the race. And his name is Super Citizen. He's trained by Eugene O'Sullivan and is the mount of Eugene's daughter, Maxine. Now, of course, you'll remember Maxine O'Sullivan if you follow racing closely because she won the 2020 uh, Fox Hunters Chase at the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, that was a remarkable win on it came to pass at 66 to one. She is a tremendous rider and Eugene can really lay one out. And I think Super Citizen has been primed for this. A horse who won four of his eight pointer points, the latest of them in November. Um, he was then second in a maiden hunter chase at Limerick in heavy ground just before New Year to a horse called Staker Wallace. And Staker Wallace uh, went on to finish third at the Cheltenham Festival in the Fox Hunters just last week. That form is red hot. And Staker Wallace is rated 134. Super Citizen gave him a really good race. He was never going to beat him, but he gave him a really good race. And this is why I think that 
super citizen has a huge chance of just 114. I think he's um, a blot, really, a blot on the handicap. Uh, he was pulled up in heavy ground at Clonmel. The heavy ground doesn't suit him. And then he had a, a quietish run last time when 9th of 15 uh, at Thurless, again in heavy ground, which wouldn't have been ideal. Now, uh, the horse has, has won at Leopardstown uh, over two miles, five and a half, staying on strongly. I just think he's got so much going for him and I'm really fancying him uh, to run a very big race. The only issue is nobody has priced up and I'm trying to figure out what odds he's likely to be. And I suspect he may be around nine to two. They may go shorter, they may go a bit longer unless there's a big run on him. I think you may want to back him early. I think he could be a well-backed horse. So super citizen, in good form, only six pounds higher than his last win. I think he's very well in on a line through Staker Wallace. He's got a terrific rider on board. And I think he's going to run a massive race in the Fairy House 255, the Ladies National. And then I move on to Carlisle for the last selection this Easter Saturday, the 358 race at Carlisle. So we're crossing the country and jumping across the Irish Sea and back and forth. This is a three mile one furlong handicap hurdle. Good to soft ground again, forecast, good in places. Storm Nelson, I think, will be the, the one everybody wants to uh, go on. Uh, he's the obvious call for our friend Sandy Thompson, the man who trained York Hill and seen me at midnight. He's gone up seven pounds for a recent win over course and distance. He's also won at air. And uh, he's the one that many people's eye will be drawn to. There's also Bali Bodhi uh, for Dr. Richard Newland, who won over nearly three and a quarter miles at Hereford in a maiden hurdle. Uh, hard to really get an angle on that form, um, but this is its handicap bow, and it, it could have got in quite nicely. And there's also Galupi, who won at Hexham over three miles last time, and he's gone up seven pounds. But I think there's a horse here that's a, a real eye catcher, and its name is Hidden Dilemma, trained in Northern Ireland by Stuart Crawford and the Mount of Paddy Brennan, which I think is eye catching. Uh, the Yard also run a horse, um, and I can't even read my own writing here. I've got to say, what is this? It's called Sketrich, is it? I think it's called Sketrich, the other one that, um, that Stuart Crawford runs and Conroe Farrell's on that one. But unless this horse has made huge strides, I can't see Sketrich uh, beating stable companion Hidden Dilemma. Now, Hidden Dilemma has only won twice in its career from 22 attempts, which is not a great strike rate until you realize that both those wins came at Carlisle. In 2018, it won by 14 lengths over two miles one and 11 lengths at the track over two and a half miles. So it certainly loves the track and this very stiff uphill finish. And if you've never been to Carlisle, believe me, it is a very stiff uphill finish. Now the horse is track tackling a new trip here, going up to three miles one. So it does have its stamina to prove, but it really did catch my eye last time. Over two miles, five furlongs in heavy ground, and that would have felt like three miles in the heavy when it was sixth of 20 at Navan. And as regular followers will know, I broadcast uh, at least once or twice a week on Irish racing. So I do keep a, a really close eye on what's going on over there. And this was a notebook horse for me. It was behind until making headway three out, then was pushed along uh, two out and was never near to challenge, finishing sixth of 20. So with Paddy, Brennan, a positive booking, and the following statistic also backing up this horse. The yard has a 29% overall strike rate at Carlisle, and that's 18 from 63, so a really good strike rate. But even better than that, when you just look at their strike rate over hurdles at Carlisle, 32% winners, eight from 25. So in other words, if you go on the stats for the yard at this track, it's a two to one chance on statistics. However, I think it's going to be around a seven to one chance. And I think each way that represents really good value. Uh, it may drift, of course, but seven to one, uh, I think is going to be the offer um, if you can get on it. Now, I'm not giving tips there for Sunday, even though there's very good racing there at Fairy House. Uh, as I say, Easter Monday, I will be tipping. So those tips will be going online on Sunday. There are seven meetings, but 
I think I will focus on the Irish card at Fairy House with maybe one or two selections from the other six uh, English meetings. Uh, but Hidden Dilemma at Carlisle in the 358 is my fourth and final selection for Easter Saturday. Uh, remember to keep your bets sensible, uh, doubles and trebles, and the uh, accumulator always worth uh, popping in there for fairly small money. And let's hope that the uh, form continues and we can continue uh, to give those bookies something to think about. So for now, from me, Paul Alster, I wish you again a very good Easter. Enjoy a good Friday and enjoy Easter Saturday, hopefully with a winner or two to cheer. Bye bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.